For the past few years now, gaming laptops have been some of the most exciting PCs around. They've gotten thinner, they've gotten lighter, and just a lot more capable than what they used to be. And PC makers are also throwing in all sorts of innovations like 360 degree rotating hinges and fully customizable parts too. So let's talk about how you can buy your own gaming laptop and I'll also give you a couple of recommendations based on what we're seeing this year. Your first step is really just figuring out how much you're willing to spend. Budget, as with most big purchases, is really the major determining factor. But the good news is we've been seeing more and more great options under $1,000 for budget gaming laptops. And in particular, I really like Dell's G515. It starts at around $840 now and um, you know, has most of the things you'd want to really get started and have some decent 60 FPS gaming in 1080p. Now, any computer in this price range is definitely gonna feel budget. You'll likely have plastic cases and you know maybe not as much storage or RAM as you'd like, but that's what you have to give up to get to such a low price. If you step up beyond $1,000, that's where things get a little more interesting and we call those mid-range gaming laptops. And that's where you can get better build quality, maybe bump up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and have more storage to actually fit more of the games you want. And the big benefit there too is you can also fit in better CPUs, better GPUs, to have an overall better experience and a computer that'll last you several years. The one we really like this year is Asus's ROG Zephyrus G14, which is a nice compact three and a half pound machine uh, that does pretty much everything you'd want and is available for not that much. And if you're willing to spend up to $1,800 or more, that's where you really get into premium gaming laptop territory. And at that point, you're looking at machines like the Razer Blade, laptops that look incredibly polished. Um, the Blade in particular has a beautiful metal case that's really trying hard to look like a MacBook. You also get the best hardware around, so you can fit in the fastest CPUs like the Core i9 chips and the fastest graphics around too. In this price range, really the sky is the limit. It's really depending on how much you're willing to spend. But something like Alienware's Area 51M, you can end up spending up to $4,700 on that one machine. Once you've settled on how much you're willing to spend, then you just really need to start looking at the CPU and GPU of your potential system. And that is actually a little more complicated than it used to be. Before we just say, get an Intel chip with the fastest Nvidia graphics you can buy. But these days, AMD has really made a good comeback with its Ryzen 4000 series mobile chips. That's what's running in the Zephyrus G14 that we like so much. And uh, it's a really powerful chip and it's doing a lot to compete with Intel, especially when it comes to multitasking and multi-core uses. But really the real takeaway is AMD chips can be really great this year. In general though, you'll still be safe getting an Intel 10th generation CPU or even a 9th generation CPU. Anything recent, 8th gen is probably a little too old at this point, but hey, if you find a good deal, go for it. When it comes to graphics cards though, AMD is still a little bit behind. Earlier this year, they announced the Radeon 5600M and 5700M mobile graphics. Those haven't really come out too much. We've seen this 5600M in a couple budget and mid-range machines. AMD says they're kind of being delayed by COVID-19, so who knows when we'll see more systems with their more powerful graphics. In general, you'll find NVIDIA graphics in gaming laptops, and honestly, NVIDIA graphics are even being paired up with the new AMD processors like that G14. If you're just looking for decent 1080p performance, especially if you're just aiming for 60 frames per second, which is kind of the bare minimum of what you'd want in any gaming machine, the Radeon 5600M is fine for when you find it. It also competes directly with NVIDIA's GTX 1650 and 1660 Ti chips. And yeah, they're, they're all fine. They're all serviceable. If you're not pushing your gaming laptop too much, if you just want to play a few games here and there and you're not too worried about long-term uh, viability and if it'll be able to support future games, those should be fine. But if you're going beyond basic 1080p performance, then you got to start looking at NVIDIA's other chips. And that's the RTX 2060, which is a good mid-range option, or at least a good beginning mid-range option, because that's the graphics that'll get you, you know, beyond 60 FPS in 1080p. That'll get you up to 120 FPS and 144. And that's really good, as we'll explain later on, for faster monitors. If you're looking at 4K gaming or the best possible performance out there, then you're looking at NVIDIA's RTX 2070 and 2080 super graphics chips, and they're fine. They're incredible, actually, but you will pay a lot for them. And I think for the most bang for your buck, the RTX 2060 is a good chip to really hang on to. 
So once you've got your budget in mind and also your CPU and GPU, then you just have to think about screen size. And this is a little more simple. I think for most people, a 15 inch laptop screen is really where you wanna be. It's the best balance of size and immersion and portability. It's not gonna be too heavy to carry around. There are a handful of 13 inch gaming laptops out there, in particular the Blade Stealth. I have never really been too impressed with them. You always end up paying more than you would for a comparable 15 inch and um, it just doesn't feel that immersive. So I feel like you're really giving up a lot just to have a slightly smaller, slightly more portable screen. Of course, 17 inch gaming laptops are still around and you know, those have been popular for a while. They're gonna be tanks, they're gonna be super heavy, but those will also fit in the fastest graphics available and of course, give you the most screen real estate. So you really have to be thinking about how you plan to use your gaming laptop. In general, 15 inches, I feel like you will be fine with that. And if you want a bigger screen, you can just hook it up to your TV and use it as a pseudo gaming console. There's also more to consider than just screen size. And especially within 15 inch displays, you're gonna see a lot of different numbers, especially when it comes to refresh rates. Most monitors have a 60 Hertz refresh rate. That's what we've been living with since black and white TVs. And it's what every LCD panel has by default. But gaming manufacturers have been really pushing the refresh rates on their panels over the past few years. So we've seen 120 Hertz, we've seen 144. Most recently now we're up to 240 and 300 Hertz. These higher numbers means the screens refresh at a faster rate. So everything just looks a lot smoother. Higher refresh rates for gamers really just means smoother overall gameplay, less visual artifacts, and you know, it's the sort of things esports players will take very seriously because it could mean the difference, a split second difference between getting a headshot or being wiped out on your own. And to make things a little more complicated, there are two other technologies you need to watch out for. That's NVIDIA's G-Sync and AMD's FreeSync. These are variable refresh rate technologies that basically tune the displays to refresh at the exact frame rate of the game you're playing. So that's in service of making everything look smoother, again, removing artifacts. And it's a nice thing to have. I don't think it's essential if you're getting a high refresh rate panel anyway. And let me just throw a shout out to OLED here. All these suggestions are really related to LCD screens because it's kind of the majority right now. We are seeing more OLED panels coming up in 15 inch gaming laptops. They're very nice. They have all the benefits of OLED, incredible black levels, great contrast, but they're mostly still stuck at 60 Hertz refresh rates and they're pretty much all 4K at this point too. You would think that's a good thing, but for games, you probably wouldn't have a machine that's actually fast enough to run it 4K natively. So you'll actually be playing games in 1080p or 1440p on that 4K panel. You're kind of spending a lot for pixels you aren't really gonna be using. So basically OLED laptops look incredible as always, but I think most people would be better off with a LCD screen that's faster and you know, it's a lot more affordable. And here are a few other things to keep in mind. Uh, when it comes to RAM, I really recommend getting at least 16 gigabytes. That'll give you enough room to game and do a lot of multitasking. If you plan to stream to Twitch or another service and also play games in high quality and do many things in your machine, look at 32 gigabytes. RAM is getting really cheap these days. Storage is a huge concern too, because games, especially AAA games, are getting bigger and bigger every year. And if you're looking at 4K textures, that takes up more space too. I'd recommend starting out with at least a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD in your machine. And normally we'd recommend going to a store and getting your hands on these machines before you buy it, but that's kind of hard to do during pandemic times. So I'd recommend just purchasing from a legitimate retailer with a great return policy. So Amazon, Best Buy, it's pretty easy to send back machines if there's something you don't like about them. And don't forget about accessories. You'll definitely need to budget for a good keyboard, a good mouse, and a good pair of gaming headphones. We've got a bunch of guys for those and gadgets, so go be sure to check those out. So now that you've got the basics down, let's talk about some of our favorite gaming laptops of the year. And the one I'd recommend, I've already mentioned, that's the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14. And this machine, it's not quite 50 inches, it's a 14 inch display, but because of that, you actually get a decent amount of portability. It's only three and a half pounds. It's running the newest Ryzen processor, so it's incredibly fast. And it's paired together with Nvidia's graphics, and I believe the one we reviewed came with Nvidia's RTX 2060, and it was fantastic. Like, it did pretty much everything I needed to, and it wasn't that expensive either. When we reviewed it, that model was going for around $1,400, and that's a pretty good deal. The price kind of fluctuates all over the place because that's how Asus rolls. But it's a good machine overall. It has a fast 120 hertz panel, has a great futuristic design, and some of the more expensive models also have LEDs on the back that you can customize to, I don't know, show off your favorite GIFs and favorite logos. 
The G14 starts around 1050, but we'd really recommend stepping up to that model with the RTX 2060. The only downside, of course, is that this computer doesn't have a webcam, and Asus did that to really slim down the bezels. That's a downside now because we're all doing a lot of video calls. Frankly, you'll still be better off plugging in an external webcam. You'll get better quality that way too. You don't always need it. As for the best budget option, I'm gonna go with Dell's G5 15. This is a machine we've loved for the past few years, and Dell has done a good job of really just honing in on how to make a good budget machine. It's powerful enough for most gaming needs, and uh, it starts around $824 now too. Of course, you can equip it with a lot more hardware, but that flexibility there is what we find really great about this machine. As for the best premium laptop, it's really hard to go wrong with the Razer Blade 15, and there are multiple levels of the 15. There's the advanced with higher level graphics and everything too, but the base model, which starts around $1,600, the best thing about the Razer Blade is that it just looks and feels like a high quality machine. It has a metal unibody case, and you can equip it with everything you really want in a gaming laptop these days. So Intel's latest chips, Nvidia's RTX 2080, and um, even a 300 hertz panels, really it can do anything as long as you can pay for it. Another solid option if you want something maybe a little flashier than the Razer Blade is Acer's Predator Triton 500. It's a great mid-range machine that can also be equipped with all the highest level graphics and CPUs. It's relatively thin and it has a great reputation among reviewers too. So it's a good option if you want something maybe that doesn't look as minimalist as the Razer Blade. It's an all around great machine and we really like Acer's build quality too. And if you can afford it, I'd really recommend looking at the most configurable machine we've ever seen, that's Alienware's Area 51M. When we first reviewed it, it seemed like a great idea, but it had some room to really improve. With the second revision, Dell has kind of improved it in some really fundamental ways. So it has Intel's fastest 10th gen CPUs now and Nvidia's latest graphics. But the real key is that you can open it up and replace the CPU down the line or replace the GPU with one of Dell's custom cards. And they're still figuring out some of these things. I remember there were a lot of complaints with the last Area 51M, but this is a really great pie in the sky machine because it can be as fast as you want to do. It can practically be as powerful as a gaming desktop, uh, except you can pick it up and take it anywhere. Now the Area 51M is certainly a big honking machine, has a 17 inch display, weighs over eight pounds, but it is the sort of machine that you can still carry around if you need to. And it's sort of like having a desktop that can move anywhere. So I think some people will find that super appealing. That's it for our guide for 2020 gaming laptops, but definitely let us know if there's more you wanna hear about or products you really want us to review. If you dug this video, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and check out Engadget.com for more gaming laptop reviews.